Good morning, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan, he's a corgi. We're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And we're gonna continue our series today about things that dogs teach us and things that we can learn from them, which is pretty much everything. Just like everything you need to know you learned in kindergarten, everything you need to know you've learned from a dog. So today we're gonna to talk about something that I think most dog people are super aware of, and that's the thing that, you know, look at the difference in the size and shape of dog. You've got your pug, you've got your chihuahua, you got your Great Dane, you got your Husky, German Shepherd, Corgis, Basset Hounds, Dachshunds. They look so different. They look like different species. And yet, a dog knows a dog knows a dog. And if you come walking down the street with your Chihuahua or your Great Dane, they're gonna recognize another dog and they're gonna respond however they do to other dogs, which until I had this dog was always like, oh, a dog, yay, let's go say hi. With this dog, it's more like friend or foe, will I bark or not? But still, it's an um, amazing, incredible miracle that dogs are all different shapes and sizes and they still know each other and they still, for the most part, like each other. And there isn't a certain breed of dog, like the poor little hairless dogs, or the funny looking pugs, or the bulldogs, or the collies, that all the other breeds of dogs discriminate against. And this is a huge problem in our country right now. And I think we could take a good lesson from dogs on this count. Dogs like other dogs. They know who other dogs are. Dogs have dog friends of every size and shape. At my sister's house, we have a good example of this. You've got the Cavaliers, which are floppy-eared, spotty, long-haired, short things. You've got the Schnauzer, upright ears. She's big, so she's probably three feet at the shoulder. Um, and then they've had an occasional other mixed in there, like some Cocker Spaniels. And, and then when my niece comes over, we've got this Pit Ridge mix, this great big like hound kind of dog with a huge head, and then um, I always forget what panda is, uh, a multi-poo, I think. But she's leggy and shaved down and spotty and gray and has sort of a smashed nose, but you can't really see her eyes. And then you get the corgi in there, short, long, stick-up ears. They all look so different, and yet when we're all there together, they get along. And Tristan and Panda have their little snark sometimes. He really likes her because she's a girl and she's poodly. Because he loves the schnauzer so much, he's very attracted to poodly girls. Um, and Panda does not like that to be the object of his affections. And yet every dog in that house, for the most part, gets along. We don't have to like stay on top of them and watch them. And they are all so different. And the most interesting thing is that my niece's dog, Mila, the big uh, Pit Ridge dog, she is like the most snuggly, loving one of the bunch. I mean, they literally use her as a pillow, sleep all over her, walk all over her, the cats too. And everybody's happy. And we don't do that so well as humans, you know? There might be uh, somebody that doesn't even look that different from you that's just like that weird kid in high school and you've seen how other kids reject the kid that might have the thick glasses or the strange haircut, let alone be three feet shorter than you and have long, long body and little short stubby legs and a nub and tail. I mean, dogs are miracles in the way that they don't discriminate and they accept each other for who they are and how they are. And they really look at each other's energy and each other's uh, health and well-being when they approach each other. I mean, that's why they're sniffing butts to see what's been eaten. Although people don't actually have a clue why dogs do that, but it is part of their greeting. And it is in fact, one way to tell where someone's been and how they're feeling. So dogs have their whole greeting ritual, which no matter how big or small the dog, again, it, they will greet each other in the same way. That little chihuahua or teacup poodle will still try to greet a big German shepherd the same way he greets another chihuahua. And people really could learn a lot from dogs in this regard. We just do not um, be so great with each other. And this always reminds me of an activity we did in a tea touch class once. And it was difficult to make this happen uh, on the first day. It really should happen in the first moment of a group coming together. And we all went out in a field and we were in pairs. Of course, with the ticks these days, we might not do it this way. <laughs> we were in pairs and we were very far apart, like 
I don't know, probably the width of a road times 10. Pretty far apart. Not a whole football field, but like three quarters of a football field apart in our pairs with a person we did not know at all. It wasn't even like my friend's friend. It was like somebody I've never seen before. And the instructions were to walk towards that person um, as much as you wanted or not. And you could back up, but I think there was some rule about only two steps. So that made you really pay attention how far you wanted to go forward if you knew you couldn't retreat. And the goal was to see what happened. <laughs> and a lot of people took a really long time to get close to each other. And some people, when they finally got close, hugged and were like, hey, my name's Barb, what's your name? Other people immediately shook hands not even necessarily those who are more in a business setting, and we're like, hey, how, how are you? My name's Barb. So it was an interesting exercise in energy. And this is something dogs do. When we walk our dogs and they see a dog down the road, they are reading that dog from a mile away. And people are so um, culturized that we don't always notice that kind of a thing going on, even if it's within us. I mean, our own emotions and feelings and energy could be shifting, but we don't pay attention to that so much. So when two dogs meet, they have checked each other out from far, far away, just like people in that exercise. And so when they get close, they've already got it pretty well established, how they're gonna meet and you know who's who and what's going on. And an interesting thing too is our grooming of dogs because we've got the poodles with the big puffs and we've got dogs with big fluffy blown out hair and dogs like a Pyrenees that should have long hair that we might shave in the summer because they're hot. And even our crazy haircuts, I mean, I know poodles that have pink on them, um, are still greeted by other dogs friendly, in a friendly way. And it's so interesting to me how they know that that's a dog and that it's one of their kind, it's one of their species, it's part of their pack. And whether or not that dog is part of their home pack or a stranger pack, so um, we should learn a lot from dogs about acceptance because we just are not very accepting as a species. Um, and it gets back to whether we're more like bonobos or chimpanzees, but that's another whole discussion. <laughs> but we should be more like dogs, we should be more accepting, and we should take time when you're in a place with strange people, like waiting in a line at the supermarket to get in and just see how you're feeling. Check in deeply with yourself. Are you holding your breath? Are you nervous around that person or are you liking them? I mean, some people, kids generally, are very accepting and will run up to strangers and say, you know, if, they, if you say, hey, this is my friend, Barb, the kid will be like, okay, good enough for me, mom's friend, I'm running over. <laughs> but we don't always like that when they do that. But we teach ourselves not to do that because the world is a little bit dangerous. But pay attention to how you greet others and you know the fact that we really are all the same we are all one consciousness one being us the plants the animals everything that's alive is connected and we need to remember that and dogs know that all the time so pay attention to your dog thanks for joining us for this episode of conversations with a corgi we will be back tomorrow for another episode um, everybody stay safe. Enjoy the heat. I've actually turned the air conditioning on and had a good night's sleep. What a difference it makes. <laughs> okay, everybody have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow.